Good day, I am Maurice Delgado from BSCE Today. Today I'm going to discuss about the direct penetration, core boring, and core lagging. Now let's first have the direct penetration. Direct penetration includes trenching and pitting. Trenching and pitting bedrock is commonly the best means of obtaining information. Test pits and trenches are an accessible soil exploratory system. Trenches, it may be dug by hand, but a mechanical back-acting shovel is the neatest and quickest method to use. So trenching and pitting are only fitted for small depths up to 3 meters. They are typically made only for improving other methods like the core boring and core lagging or for minor structures. Now let's move on to core boring. So boring is simply refers to making holes in the soils, while filling is making holes in the solid rocks. Boring, making or drilling boreholes in the ground with an outlook to obtain soil or rock samples from the particular depths. Now here is the methods of exploration for boring. These are used at greater depths exploration where direct methods or those trenching and pitting fail. Here is the four methods of boring of holes. First, let's have the Uger method. Uger method or Uger boring is the simplest method. So it has two types including hand operated and power driven Uger. Hand operated Uger the maximum limited depth of holes is normally 10 meters. For advancing the boring, a string of drill rods is used. The hole's diameter commonly varies from 10 to 20 centimeters. It is suitable for all types of soil above the water table and in plie soil below the water table, but not suitable for very stiff to hard clay nor in granular soils below the water table. Now let's move on to power-driven Uger or the continuous flight Uger. This is the most popular method of soil exploration for boring holes. The flight acts as a screw conveyor to bring the soil to the surface. This may be used in all types of soil including sandy soils below water table but not suitable if the soil is mixed with gravel, cobbles, etc. This method can rapidly drill the holes in depths of 60 meter or more. Now let's have the wash boring. This is the convenient method when the soil below the ground water table is either sand, silt, or clay and not suitable when the soil is mixed with gravel and boulders. The purpose of this is to drill only not to make use of disturbed wash materials for analysis. Next, the third one is the rotary drilling. Rotary drilling is often called as diamond drilling, consists of ground rotated at the end of the hollow barrel, which holds the cylinder of rock produced by the drill. This method is useful in case of highly resistant strata. It is primarily used for penetrating the overburden between the levels of which samples are required. It is conveniently used in sands and silts. This method is preferably suitable for boring holes of diameter 15 to 20 centimeters in most of the rocks. The last one is the precaution drilling. This method is employed for hard soils or soft rock strata. Drill holes may be sunk by chisel drill bits and percussive hammer inside the hole to break the rock. Holes drilled vary in diameter approximately 110 mm and 80 mm or less than in some cases and most commonly 105 mm. Next, let's move on to logging of course. Logging is the systematic recording and measuring of as much as information required to determine the lithology or the rock types, mineralogy, potential geological history, structure, and alteration zones through the tiny piece of cylindrical rock drilled and removed from the potential mineral deposits. A geological core logging process has been developed to record mechanical and structural properties of the rock mass. The samples obtained from Lali, of course. 